Okay, so I'm going to take a note out of Indy's book, and I'm going to do an unboxing of this box. But I'm going to kick it up a notch because I'm also going to play some of what's in this box. Because Hairs of Blazing does not get enough recognition like they should. And this label has been absolutely amazing to me. Not with just releasing my stuff, but just quality of tapes. Holy crap, are the quality of tapes amazing. He's good with his shipping. He's good with everything. So if you have not seen Hairs of Blazing label before, I recommend checking them out. The, uh, oops. The, um, website is hairsablazing.bandcamp.com. Everything that's in this box, you can find there. I'm not even sure what all is in this box. All I know is he sent me a bunch. Okay, I lied. You can see I already opened it. But, um... There is a ton of good music on the Hairs of Blazing label. So let's see what is in this box. And this is a care package that he sent to me out of the kindness of his heart because guy's awesome. Absolutely awesome person. So, got a whole bunch of tapes little note with some download codes. I will probably share some of these download codes with uh with you all. Um they're going to become or going to be uh first come first serve. So if you want one of the albums that I post, you know, they'll be there for free. Mostly cuz I have most of the digitals for Hairs of Blaze and stuff. So I don't need duplicates. But here is everything he sent me. And I'm actually going to start with this little album. And what this is, is year one. It is a mixtape that I put together. I curated all the tracks. And it's one track from every album that he released in his first year. All mixed together on two tapes, gold and silver. I do believe there's still a couple copies of this left. Um, I know you got it. What did you think of it? I really liked it. It was a nice flow. There was a... <laughs> Went through five iterations before we finally got here. This this was a fun one to put together. Definitely, definitely a passion project. There's a lot of good music on this. Then we got another one. If y'all haven't heard, whoops, of me dropping a tape. If y'all haven't heard of Jamie Awakshadar? I guess this Prism Death album. If y'all haven't heard this yet, you're missing out. This album is absolutely, utterly gorgeous. In fact, Agreed. why don't I just show you? Uh, turn that up some. Fast forward into the meat of it. That is this album right here. Album is just beautifully crafted. And if you want a direct link to it, there's the QR code. Should be able to scan that. There's a 
put that aside. And then next one up on deck is a reissue of Focus M14 Kilo Oblique. This originally came out on um, Seiko Mart, which is currently also sold out. It's got the OB strip. The tape style is different than what's on um, Seiko Mart. There's your track list. Another gorgeous release. This one has the glossy. You did the glossy paper with this one. Put that OB strip back on there. And if you want the direct link, there's the QR code again. Next on deck, we have Northview Mall by Saurus Sa FM. FM. I'm going to just have you pronounce these weird names. You're better at it than I am. It's <laughs> direct link to the album here. And this is another absolutely beautiful release that he uh, put out. I am going to now switch up the music for this one. So I'm going uh, to fast forward into this a bit. Okay, I think my deck's fucking up. Hang on. That was really weird. I definitely don't remember it sounding like that. Play. Well then, let me try a different deck. <clears throat> this happens. This is very unusual. Hang on. Time to get technical. Figure out what's going on here. Because this ain't normal. Let's see if it's actually playing right. Definitely playing right. On the one side. I fixed it. Hooray! Anyhow, that would be all my deck having issues. But another glossy label. Still a beautiful release. Good solid ball soft on Absolutely. Next up we got ReCloud 64, the album Rendezvous, and there's the link to it again. And I'm going to feel like an idiot if these QR codes actually aren't the links. Best song title ever right there, Fuck Me Eyes. It's great. But this is another absolutely gorgeous gorgeous album and I recognize the still shot from the cover as 
that a mall you've been in? Or no, that's the other one. There's the inside. So I'm gonna pop this bad boy in. Now that I got my deck working. All right, fast forward. Now we're listening to such a pretty album. I will say that is the first time I've had an issue playing any of his tapes and it kind of makes me wonder what was going on there. I'm blaming my dad because he never puts out a bad tape. Yeah. Yeah, that's really weird. Regardless, it's playing fine now. Gee, I wonder what song this is. Maybe, maybe we're gonna be starting something with this song. <laughs> might, might, might start it with Michael Jackson. Maybe. Never heard this song in my life. So next up, I know a bunch of y'all probably got this one. Got the Sangam double album. Two tapes. There it is. Put this one on the uh, smoky tape. Nice printed J cards. This guy definitely puts some some heart into these releases. Just absolutely phenomenal. All right, let's put Sand Game in now. I should have maybe fast-forwarded these ahead of time. So, if you want to link directly to this album, there's the QR code for that one. And next up, we've got Kmart. 87. Just simply Game Art 87. This one's on a deep blue tape. Another solid release. Awesome. Pop that one in. Definitely your classic vaporwave sound. Press F for Kmart. Press H. And that's the end of the album. Not really. Oh, you know what? I think this is that project I heard about that's used nothing but the Kmart tapes that were released on archive.org. Yeah. Because I recognize this. Because I almost did something with this song. <laughs> I couldn't come up with any idea, so hats off to this guy. He came up with something. Reminds me, I need to put that cable back in the car. So next up, we've got... How you pronounce that? Um, she's in Freefall. So we're going to go with she's in? Focus. Focus, camera. 
You know you wanna. There we go. Oh. Anywho, well, there's the album. I don't know if this one has a QR code. This one does not have a QR code. Another glossy J card. Very shiny. Makes my ADD happy. And then there's the the tape. Okay, pop this one in. And if you're just now tuning in, welcome to the Vaporwave listening channel. We're playing selections from Hairs of Blazing. .bandcamp.com It's kind of a funky one. How's that pronounced? Cyparasis. Cyparasis. Okay, so we got Cyparasis. Come on, focus. My camera does not like focusing today. Northeastern Coastal Forest. There's the uh, link. Another good uh, tape. that one in. Come on. And this guy on Hairs of Blazing dubs every one of these tapes one at a time. In real time. Like he don't play around. Let's get to somewhere where it's a little louder. There's a lot of ambient and vaporwave. This is definitely a good ambient release. Yep, slow burn, hypnagogic. Well, not quite hypnagogic, but definitely a nice mellow. Either way is good, whatever you want to call it. Just don't call it a big old steaming pile of poo, because it's definitely not that. None of these are. And I'm only playing the first track on any of these. And by the way, the disembodied voice you're hearing, this is Derek, who makes music as Kiryoshi. That is correct. Still has a couple tapes of his uh, reincarnated resurrection available on his band camp. So, that's... And still trying to get it on tomorrow. Yes, we're still trying to get it on vinyl. He's got a crates up if you want to help that out. Next up, we've got... Net URL. Net URL. This is definitely a classic vaporwave style. There's the link to it. This one kind of reminds me of the production style of Floral Shop, to be honest with you. Let me show you what I mean. It's very unique. I do dig this intro. Alright, get out of the case. There's the track list. I like the use of the uh, glitch characters that they did here. I thought that was kind of cool.
What up, old skies? How you doing? So there's net URL. Then we got the Hantasy release with a bunch of language that I can't read. And this is in gaze of. Stop the focus thing. I'm gonna slap my camera. Don't like me. There we go. This one he did the OB strip with it as well. There's the link. And uh, simplistic tape. I like these simple labels, the way he does those. Just simple. Let's pop that one in. And the funny thing is, is when I was pulling tracks to use for the year one mix, because I do believe this one's on there, one of the songs, I think I used Yana. I didn't realize it at the time, but I think every one of these is an acronym or something, like parental guidance, TDK for that type of tape brand. I don't know the rest of them. But I wonder if that's what he was going for. I think so. Another glossy label. And the next I one. With that album, there's a story mark to it. Yeah, I have to look that up then and yeah, dive a little yeah, deeper. If you go on the album page, it's in the notes. Yeah, one of the things that I was doing when I was curating tracks, which some of these albums here I actually did curate tracks off of. I don't think Kmart 87 was out at that point, but I do think the Free Fall album, Sangam, however he pronounced that one, um, I think I got tracks off of that one. I know Prism Death I did in North Riverview Mall and Rendezvous. I think I have a side part of this. There's a lot of tracks. And for the most part, I did not edit or remix any of them. Unless it made sense in the moment. Like there were a couple that uh, had like two parts. So I assembled the part one and part two as if it was one thing. Or if I was transitioning from one thing to another and it wasn't quite making it, I'd do a little thing at the end in the beginning of a track mm -hmm. just to get it to transition. But for the most part, all of those tracks and songs are in their original form. Some of them I definitely had to shorten. So I'd just go through like this 30, 40 minute long track and pull out a section that fit. Yep. Which I did with uh, the Valerie track, I pulled out the middle. Yep, yeah. Because the middle actually fit perfectly where I uh, placed it. Well, next up, we've got Fibonacci with another really cool looking label. And there's the uh, QR code to link to the album. Nice deep blue tape. I dig the label on the labels on these. This one. So that was hand to see. Let's put Fibonacci in now. It's got the glossy labels. They're shiny. <laughs> and this one actually has a reversible cover. 
so you can go either direction with it. There's some of the tripod here, and I like I like the reversed one. I don't know. This sounds like baby making music to me. Well, that's why I like the reverse one because it matches the first track. Can't get the OB strip back on here. God, I can't get over just how quality these tapes are from from him. My hair's a blazing definitely does not put out a crap product at all. And we got Sunset Ink Midwinter. It's another really good solid uh, solid tape. Now I can get this box out of the way. Yeah, it's easier to open these now. Sometimes he puts the uh, count in there and inside the case too so I always like these nice little surprises be like oh I got that one and then there's the track listing there's two bonus tracks that are exclusive to the cassette on this this release nice glossy label again And there's the, the tape. This one just works so well together with the tape color and the label. It's like a not quite black. Black tape. Uh, we'll slap that tape in. I think I, uh, I think I may have had something from this album as well on the uh, year one mix. I think so. You know what? I keep talking about the year one mix. Let's take a look at this this uh, track listing, how he did it, which I thought was still kind of cool. He took the uh, album covers for each release there's Valerie's Reef Frequent Lee Larson this guy this guy's good at what he does there's a rendezvous down there that's tape one which is with tape one I kind of went Pulled the more funky tracks and just put them on one and gave it a flow. So it's more more upbeat but still fairly mellow and chill. Some good stuff. And we have tape two, which is more more ambient and mellow. Some more Lee Larson. There's a boy called Crow. Volume one of my collected works. There's the uh, Kilo one. Yeah, Kilo Oblique. But I don't see Midwinter. Maybe I didn't include a track off of that one. That was, that was probably uh, 2019. Here's the other one of me. I know there's a Princess Commodore 64 one. I don't remember which one it is. I think it might be that one, maybe? Yeah, these first two. I was talking about really long songs that I had to shorten. The first one on this one was like 38 minutes. This one was like 32, so I definitely had to shorten them down a bit. 
This one I remember the White Claudia, I think, is the artist's name. Um, with that one, it was uh, meant to be like a survival horror game soundtrack for a game that didn't exist. This one with the boy called Crow, I used uh, parts one and two of the one song and blended them together. Just because it made sense and it worked. Um... I think that's one of the Quadratics albums. And that one might be the Electric Dreams. See, I purposely did not pay attention to any cover art or artist name mm -hmm. when I was curating everything. Yeah. And when I was mixing it, because I wanted it to stay as unbiased as possible. So I didn't sound like, you know, I did any favoritism or anything. Right. And the funny thing is, is it the hardest tracks to pick and place anywhere was my own stuff. Because I had uh, two two releases on Hairs of Blazin in that year. Right. And I couldn't pick any of my own stuff because I'm like, I don't really want to put my stuff on here because I'm making the mix. I don't know. It was, it was just like a weird thing. Like, I felt weird about putting my own stuff in this even though it was part of that year oh, it worked it, I don't know it's really weird but I basically forced myself to stay as unbiased as po possible when curating and keep you know, I wasn't going to put somebody first or at the beginning for any reason other than it worked at that point. Yeah. Like, not like, I'm going to put this person first or on tape one because, you know, they're my friend or I like them more than this other person or something. Like, no, it was literally, where does this sound fit? Where does this audio fit? And then just sequenced it all together and then changed it up five times. That was fun. Huh. I just realized the Kilo Oblique has the bottom half of uh, Missing No. Right there. It's funny. But this is the, the care package from Hairs of Blazing. If you haven't checked out this label yet, I highly recommend going, showing them some love, grab some tapes. This guy does amazing work. I know y'all have heard me brag about Hairs of Blazin before. I, I I can't rap this guy enough. He's just so good at what he does and super awesome, nice guy. Like definitely one of the one of my top labels right there. Actually, I think I think out of all the labels we have in the scene right now, Hairs of Blazin might be the one that I have the most tapes from. At one point, it was business casual. Because nice guy Christ was like, let me bless you, my child, with all these tapes. And then gave me all those, like, uh, just a huge stack of tapes. Which I promptly listened to every one of. Because that's a thing with me. If, you're, if you give me tapes, I'm going to listen to them. If I buy them, it's a 50-50 chance I'm going to listen to the tape. Because at that point, I have the digital, so I'll probably listen to the digital. But if you actually give me a tape and be like, here you go, here's a free tape, I'm going to sit down, listen to it, and, you know, give it, give it some love and give it some attention. And if you want my opinion, I'll give you my, my thoughts and opinions on it. But there's a lot of talent in this scene, so... Usually my opinions are pretty good. But that's that's the Hairs of Blazing care package. Check them out. Hairs of Blazing. Dot Bandcamp. Dot com.